This is David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech University, talking about CE 3303 solids. We're talking today about stress concentrations in axial force members. These stress concentrations are an increase above the average normal stress that you would see that occur at cross section area changes. Two cases that we're going to look at are at a hole in an axial force member and at a necking down, neck down section. Uh, we have for the hole, we cut a section right at the hole and here's looking at it straight on two dimensions from the side. I have a force P and I have a reduced area, cross sectional area, taking out the hole and I figure my average normal stress, it would look like that in green and that average normal stress is just P over A. We combined the total area of that section taking out the hole. But because of the way the stress flows through an axial force member, when it has a discontinuity like this, it tends to increase the stress adjacent to the discontinuity. So it increases the stress can be significant, up to three times what the uh, average stress would be. And I've shown that in red. So like the stress is flowing in here and to get around the hole it flows and it's bigger than you would expect right next to the hole. So um, we have this uh, K factor, the stress concentration factor, that's just the ratio of the maximum stress to the average stress. We can rearrange that and just say the maximum stress is K times the average stress. If I look at a neck down member, to cut a section there right after it's neck down, look at it on the side, I would figure my normal average stress would be P over A in green, but out here on the edges, next to where it's, cut, where it's neck down from being the bigger section, I get a higher stress once again, sigma max. Same formula holds. Let's look at a simple example that combines both cases. I've got a member dimensioned as shown, 5 millimeters thick, 40 millimeters wide, 20, 20 millimeter diameter hole in it. It necks down to 20 millimeters wide, still 5 millimeters thick. And I've got a radius for what this is called as a fillet. The radius of that little curved area that sort of reduces, it does reduce your uh, stress concentrations, the radius of that's 10 millimeters. Let's say we're putting 8 kilonewtons on there as an axial force and we want to find the maximum normal stress. I have to check two cases, one at the hole, one at the neck down section. Looking at the hole, I've got an area of 40, it was, minus the 20 diameter of the hole times 5 for the thickness, so I've got a cross-sectional area of 100 millimeters squared. My average stress, normal stress, is P over A, it's 8,000. I want to convert it into newtons, 8 kilonewtons into 8,000 newtons. Divided by the area of 100 millimeters squared is 80 megapascals. Now I need to go to a chart and see what the geometry and the size of the hole and the size of the strap make my K. So I look in the book at figure 424, um, I have a chart that's got K on the vertical, 2R over W on the horizontal. Well, R is the radius of the hole, W is the width of the strap, which is 40, so I just plug into that and I see that that's equal to 0.5. Then I find that point on my uh, horizontal. 0.5 is way out here. I've just got one curve in figure 424, so I just find the point where it intersects that curve and go to the left and find that's a K factor of 2.1. So therefore my sigma max is K times sigma average, 2.1 times 80 is 168 megapascals. Now I have to check my neck down section. Same thing, it just happens to be the same area, 20 millimeters times 5 millimeters thick, 100 millimeters squared. Sigma average is still the same thing, 80 megapascals. 
Then there's a chart in the book 423 that shows K factor as it relates to there's several curves, I think six or seven curves that are based on different ratios of W over H. W is the um, the wide area before it necks down. H is the height of the neck down section, so in this case it's 40 over 20, 2.0. That tells me what curve to look at. I've drawn it in red just to show it a little bit more clearly. Then on the horizontal I have this uh, ratio of the radius of the fillet to the, over, to the height of the neck down part. That is 20, 10 over 20.5. So, once again, I go to that point on the horizontal axis, R, H, R over H of 0.5, go up to the correct curve, which is W, H, w over H 2.0, and then I go over to the left to find my K factor 1.4. So, my maximum stress is that 1.4 times my average stress, 80, that's equal to 112 megapascals. This one controls at the whole maximum stress.